So in this part of the project, we're just getting started, and our overall goal is to create a spreadsheet that you can use to model the cost of any college you're thinking about going to. And that could even mean you're starting off in one college and then transferring to another school, and you can actually still use this spreadsheet to figure out what you're paying and what you will owe. So we want to really build something here that you can use for any school you choose to go to, but in this part of the project we're going to start with the same school just so we have numbers that we can agree upon and compare so we're going to use all of the expenses for the school SUNY Plattsburgh and the first step is just to click on this link right here let's do that make a copy and I would ask that you change the name of the document up here so it has your names up front so, for example, I'll type my name, Sean's Student Loan Project Calculator, and then I'm ready to go. Now, I've, I've set this up for you. Uh, this is all for the freshman year. You're going to repeat everything you see here for sophomore and junior and senior year, and I'll even show you a shortcut to do that. Okay. So, um, here, notice we've got to fill these things out undergraduate tuition the athletic fee career service fee so on and so forth we have to fill all these different things here these are the typical expenses per semester and the only exception is apparently the parking permit fee you'll pay that once in the year but every other thing you see is the cost per semester so food room that's per semester now you can find all this information as it says right here and these are all the little assumptions and things you want to make for your expenses. You can find them here on this link. So if you click the link to SUNY Plattsburgh, there's a lot of options here. We are interested in the cost and aid, specifically tuition and fees. So I'm going to click that. And here, you know, you they want you to call them and talk to them, which I guess you could do, but we don't need to do that. We're going to scroll down here. And they're giving you some different notes here, distance learning, right, with, with the pandemic and all these things. So we're going to go down to tuition and fees for 2020 to 2021. And we're going to consider ourselves undergraduate U.S. students. And we're also considering ourselves in-state students living on campus. And it says that right here in the project, right? Um, we're living on campus, New York State residents. Okay. So we go here and we have our undergraduate tuition, 3535. So let's type that in. That's per semester. There are two semesters in a year, 3535. And then all these fees start coming up. You don't see them here because you have to click on these categories. So there's mandatory fees. Let's take a look at that. And that's all these things here per semester. These numbers go right into, right into the spreadsheet here takes us right down and then we look over called optional fees and we're just, we're just going to assume that you're paying all the optional fees and, and there's a whole discussion for that with each school cardinal cash is the special cash that uh, you have at the school here we're going to leave that blank as zero and then let's assume all these numbers here apply we're going to ignore the fitness fitness center right that's included in the mandatory fees, I believe. But here you have a medication fee, an alumni fee. You pay once a year for your to register for parking permits, and then seventy-six dollars per per semester to park. There's this green fee. This fee right here, assuming you need health insurance, let's assume you're going to use that, and that you're going to also use Cardinal Computer Care Services. So all of these fees are going to go in here as well right I think it actually is gonna the only thing you leave blank is the cardinal cash now as you go down here that should take you down through let's see the last thing is the student medication fee so that gets us down here we still have to deal with food and food and room now for food and room uh, they they bundle up housing and meals but if we click on this we'll see there's lots of options actually and um, I'm asking you to choose the anytime dining plus 125. And that, that just, that's like their best uh, dining plan, essentially. So you pay 2545, and that'll go right in your spreadsheet here. 
2545 and then the room there's different prices I'm asking you to assume that you're going to be um, let's see let's go back to the options here for rooms let's assume as I scroll down, I'll just scroll down in the last one as we scroll down here uh, that you are in white face so 45 40 and um, that says first year program so maybe that means it's only for freshmen but we're just going to assume you can stay there the whole time just to keep it really simple we have enough complicated variables in here so 45 40 and for total expenses I've got the formula right here you just copy and paste it um, delete the little quotation mark here enter and X out the autofill. Now, now it's going to erase the coloring here. Please make sure you get that back in. Keep that formatting. And then the same here. Now, this is per semester, so it's adding up all the expenses here, everything. And you could you could just double that. I, I wrote the formula here to add up all the expenses and double it. That's what this is saying. And then take 30 away. That's because of the parking registration fee. You don't want to pay that twice. So you can copy and paste that in and then just reformat it. Notice when you copy and paste, though, you lose some of the formatting here, that line. So click on the borders and then click on the right hand side here to get that border back in. Just a little bit of formatting. So for the expenses, that's the basic idea. You go through and fill that out. And then for other expenses, the idea here is that there are other things attached, like books and supplies. You'll have personal expenses throughout the whole year. You might have to travel places. You want to consider groceries outside the meal plan because you're actually budgeting not just for school things, but everything you'll need for the year. Cell phone plan, possibly car expenses, and then just ge other general expenses. Now, there are lots of assumptions you can make, but I'm asking you to make these. Some of these are fairly accurate for everyone. We're going to assume books and supplies start at 1220. So we put in 1220. And then I'm saying that it'll go up by 100 each year. So sophomore year will be 1320 and so on and so forth. Personal expenses, we're saying, let's just keep them at 1500 And travel will stay at 1000 for all the years. So 1500 1000 that's 100 1000 Groceries, you might need groceries for all sorts of reasons. So let's say 300 and then it goes up by 100 per year, assuming you'll be wanting to cook more or whatever. We'll start off at 300 Cell phone, I said $1,200, I think $120 per month, I assume, and we'll keep it at that. And then we'll just consider other expenses at a flat rate of $500 here. Uh, for car expenses, I'll put that on the list there, we'll assume $1,000, and we'll keep it at $1,000. So assume $1,000, keep it at $1,000. Uh, I didn't write that in the canvas yet, but I will. Now here again is the total sum of all your other expenses. Now the idea is that you have all these expenses, but you're going to have some money, hopefully, that you can use to pay for those things and not use a loan to pay for. So we have to assume that you might have some cash from working, maybe working over the summer. And here are the assumptions. We're saying let's assume you make two thousand and then add a thousand to that on top of that two thousand each year, so three thousand, four thousand, five thousand. So start with two thousand. Scholarships and grants, they average around $8,000 a year. At Plattsburgh, but the way we'll do is we'll start at $3,000 and then increase by $1,000 per year. So we'll stay below the average, starting off at $3,000. Work study, you can work on the campus. There's different awarded amount of times you can work. I believe they limit it to 20 hours a week is the highest you can get. Um, but there's every school has different rules about that. So we'll say 10 hours per week at eleven eighty dollars an hour for 12 weeks. So write a formula in here for this. Don't just give me a number. So for example, I'll start the formula off for you. It equals eleven eighty dollars per hour. There are 10 hours per week and then 12 hours per semester. So that formula will give you a number and then you can just keep upping the hours each year. So the second year it'll be times 12, right? And so on and so forth. Oh, actually times, excuse me, times two because there are two semesters, right? That'll double your work study award. So they're doing $11.80 an hour, okay? 10 hours per week, 12 weeks per semester, and then two semesters makes a year. And then for other, that I put on other category, yeah, let's say you, for whatever reason, you have 500 other dollars available to you per year. 
maybe uh, they're from gifts, maybe you're selling things, who knows, you have other money available. Add up all those together, that's all the money you have to pay off for all your college and yearly expenses. Now, the loans make up the difference because you can use loans for any expenses during the year essentially that would qualify as college related or living expenses. And there, is, there are limits on it, but basically all the things you need for college and living, you can use loans for that. So first we need to determine what do you need for a loan. So the formula would be something like this. It would be um, you want to take all of, let's see, all of the expenses for the year up here, so that's B22, right? So B22, and then you want to also add all the expenses from B32 in this case, right? That's all your expenses, college expenses, personal expenses, and then subtract what you can pay, the cash, in my case, it's B39, and that will give you the, the loan amount that I need. Then here, you're gonna fill these two in, uh, we're going to assume that you get the direct subsidized and subsidized and unsubsidized maximums. Now, you can find that right here on this list. Now, you can scroll down, or it says right here, how much can I borrow? Click that, and it takes you to it, right? These numbers, right? Dependent, we're assuming you're dependent, so 3500 and 2000 That's for the first year, but be aware that changes with each year. So it goes up by 1000 and the subsidized amount, the IS, which is nice, subsidized means you're paying off your interest while you're in school, and that amount's going to actually increase each year, 5,500, and then uh, it stays at 5,500 senior year, so it increases. The unsubsidized amount will stay at 2,000, so be aware of that. You know, those numbers will go in here. Direct plus, that's a loan that might go, uh, if you have family members that could sign the loan for you, that means that they'll pay it if you don't, uh, and that amount could be up to whatever's whatever you need essentially to pay for school um we're going to assume that's blank and leave it blank here private loans usually then cover up the difference now instead of writing a number here write a formula essentially the formula would be something like this we type in equals and you want to look at the loan amount you need in our case that's in b41 so that's the loan amount we need b41 and then take away the direct subsidized loan and the direct unsubsidized loan and it's going to be zero but the the direct plus loan that remaining amount will be what you need for a private loan and then the loans taken should always be equal to the loans needed but don't just type in equals b41 instead try typing equals the sum this will check to see if everything is working, of B42 through 45. There we go. Now, this number should always match this number. The loans you've taken should match the loans you needed so you can pay for your bills and go to school. That's the basic idea. And that's just for freshman year. Now, for sophomore year, take it all, right? Copy it and paste it. And that'll speed things up. And then every time it says freshman year, you should write in sophomore year. So I'm going to highlight that, delete it, type in sophomore, like that, and keep going. Now these numbers right here will remain the same, but, but the other numbers, other expenses start to change, and the money you can pay starts to change, and the loans you can pay start to change. Um, so make sure, make sure you ch change those numbers. What's nice about a lot of this is that if you've typed in formulas, like I think we typed in a formula up here. Um, let me go back, sorry. So for example, if any formula I have, like 10, 6, 2, 0, let's look at that. That formula, when you copy and paste, it'll recopy for this new set of data. So in other words, like total other expenses, this, this number down here, it'll change as you change these numbers. You don't need to enter any new formulas. I do ask that you color code this and make this a different color, right? Anything different, I would choose something along this row right here, it's easiest to read, but you might have a better strategy. As long as it says sophomore year and everything's correct, we're good to go. Now at the very end here, um, at the very end, make two rows that show two things, the total cost of the four years 
all the expenses, school and other expenses put together, all that stuff, and the total loan amount taken as a formula as well, everything put together. So you write the formulas that do that. They're going to be some formulas, S-U-M, and you just enter in the cells with commas between them, and you got it, and it will work. All right, I hope that helped.